Welcome to another lively edition of The Deadly Experiment, all of you in TV land. Rick Adams, your producer and host for another one of these programs that uh, we consider to be ending the spiral of time that we have been on the air. You know, we've done these programs for 15 years now on local statewide public access television, The Deadly Experiment. We named it The Deadly Experiment, the flip side of The Lively Experiment, which is the mantra of uh, Rhode Island and Roger Williams. You know, Roger Williams was a pioneer in freedom. Not separation of church and state, or God and state, but separation of lie from truth. He was a seeker, he was a soul searcher, and he found liberty, soul liberty as he called it, in Christ. He provided us with a colony here in Providence Plantations as a symbol of freedom throughout New England, particularly Massachusetts Bay Colony, where men could do what? Sodomize each other? No. Come here to cause revolution? No. He did not approve of those things, much to the consternation of the perverts and the politicians today. He came here to establish freedom to do what? To worship God in any way that, that you felt you could worship Him. And that was the establishment of uh, this colony, this state today of Roger Williams. We have Roger Williams Park, if the city of Providence does not decide to put that up for sale as well to pay the $90 trillion in unfunded pension liability debt, Roger Williams Park has been a uh, certainly a landmark of this whole state. And today, unfortunately, it has been neglected. It has been destroyed in many respects. It is nothing to some but an eyesore. Folks, liberty can only come through God. Satan can bring a fake sense of liberty too, can't he? He sure can. Satan says in the end times he will be posing as Jesus Messiah himself. Now how will you know that Jesus, the fake Jesus who comes first to rule in the temple in Jerusalem, how will you know he's fake? The whole world will be deceived at the thinking he's Jesus except his elect, those who are called in this age before the foundation of the earth. Well, you'll know if you can look in a mirror and you see flesh instead of spirit, you'll know he's fake. If you can grab yourself physically, latch on to your arm or your leg, you'll know that he's fake. Why? Because God says, and the Apostle Paul said, that when Jesus returns, all flesh, not some, not most, all flesh shall be changed into a new body, a spiritual body, in the twinkling of what? of an eye. That's how fast it'll happen. God brings judgment down on the rulers of the city of Jerusalem. Very shortly it's going to happen. Just when they say we have what? Peace and safety. A fake peace, a fake, a fake safety. North Korea is a good example. North Korea is not about safety or peace or the threat of war. Why? Because it's not war that we have to worry about now. Oh, there are these continual and, uh, you know, these con job wars that are being uh, foisted upon the people of Syria. And that's because the state of Israel wants them uh, against the people of Iran. Again, because the state of Israel wants that whole region for itself from the Euphrates to the Nile. Their so-called promised land, which will be taken from them as well as their salvation when Jesus comes, as we've said on previous shows. So... Peace and safety are the two key words that you hear all the time. Who will make war with the beast? It says in Revelation chapter 18. The beast is the power structure of the end times worldwide, a world political government. That the very people who waltzed us into World War I and World War II, as Wilson did, who was controlled by the Council on Foreign Relations and the Rothschild banking regime from Europe to America, said, because of the USS Sussex being attacked in the English Channel with Americans on board, we have to enter World War I because of the sinking of the Lusitania. And yet, that was a whole entire fraud, as we're going to see again. We're going to see it now in a segment that's coming up shortly. 
But peace and safety is what Gina Rajimondo says that she's all interested in, the safety of our children in our schools. Doesn't that just tickle your little hearts out there? She wants to keep our kids safe physically, not mentally, not spiritually. Ban the Bible, ban the prayers, bring in humanism, socialism, Judaism, Holocaustism, all of these evils, and forget about God. He's persona non grata. That's not what Roger Williams stood for. But now that we've rejected God, he says in the book of Deuteronomy, his people Israel here in America today, Deuteronomy 28, that we've shown on this broadcast many times, when you reject me and you don't obey me and you reject my commandments, you will have problems like you've never seen. Economic, political, border issues, aliens taking over, wars that will help destroy you from within, he says. And that's a promise. God says he keeps his promises. We don't. So today, what is America facing? What is Rhode Island facing? Nothing but trouble. But we have new gun laws that are going to keep us safe, Gina Rajimondo said. Forget about the abortuaries and the killing of unborn children in the womb. That's not about peace and safety. That's about choice. That's about freedom of choice. So let's take innocent people who may have had a domestic squabble or be snubbed on and reported on by a neighbor who says they're kind of violent people. We got to call the cops. The cops come in, they go before a judge, and the judge says, well, I think this person's a little unstable just like they've done in the Soviet Union. That's the same thing. The old communist Judaic formula, mind control, making criminals out of people who are not criminals. But if it'll save one life, they say it's worth it. The fact that people are armed every day, defending their lives, their homes and their properties without help from the police doesn't matter. You're dealing with evil people. Gina Rahimondo is an evil woman. There's no question about it. She's proven that in recent days again and again. Not incompetent or inept, but evil. Why? Because they've rejected the God of our fathers, and instead they've accepted another God. And that God is bringing damnation upon this state and on this nation. Make no mistake about it. You will hear of more violence, more shootings, more killings, and more innocent people who are falsely accused and convicted of violating the two new gun laws. But the opposition says, we're just beginning. We want total gun control. Now, that's not what they said in the beginning after Sandy Hoax. They said, all we want is to get those bad guns away from people. Well, it's all a hoax, my friends. Right now, we're going to show you what a man who was an exile from communist Cuba said before the legislature, I believe, of Colorado. And his name is Manny, his first name. See the passion in his voice. You think he's crazy? You think he may be a little tipsy? No. You don't know what freedom's about until you saw what it was like in Cuba to be a slave and tyrannized and your family taken from you in the middle of the night at the knock of a door, folks. That's what's going to come to America under martial law. This man we're going to bring to you right now. This is a recent, going back a few years, testimony against gun control before idiot, stupid, dumb legislators. Pardon that expression, but they are dumb, just like Rhode Island. And here it comes right now. We'll be right back. My name is uh, Manuel Martinez, also known as Manny Martinez. I uh, agree with my two predecessors here. But I have another issue here, which is the most important thing, okay? This bill is in step forward, close to, fun, to gun control, period, to disarm the American people, period. What I'm interested to in know, what is behind this? They come here in those dog and pony show and try that they're going to protect people. You're going to protect nobody. I want to know what is behind it. Do you know what is behind it? The problem that we have in this country with this Marxism. Marxism is not coming. Marxism is here. Marxism has been in this country for quite a while. And the politicians allow that because they are ignorant or they are part of the plot. Don't sell me this. 
A very powerful man tried to sell me this 50 something years ago. I didn't buy it. Do you think you're going to buy it? You're going to... Do you think I'm going to buy it now? After pushing 80 years? This is Marxism. Plain and clear. With everything. Communist, socialism, humanism, I heard that too in my native country. They put this dog and pony show saying, hey, we're going to protect you. No, what they did it was enslave a country. They destroyed the country in the same way that this country is going to be destroyed if we continue in this round. I tell you what you're trying to do, sir. This is what you're selling here. This is what you're selling here. You are not selling protection. You don't care about it, we die or leave. This is what you're selling. This is what they're selling here. There's another outburst. Uh, we'll have to clear those individuals. You want out. me to continue? You or you want me to kick uh, quit? Or well, you want to silence me? No, you continue. You have your time. It's the outburst. A very powerful man couldn't silence me. Put me in chain. But my spirit was never. You can, you can tell me anything you want. I am a free man. I become from a free people. From a free country. From a free, from a free family. I get to this country due to liberty. To freedom. This country opened its arm when I needed it. When my, my life was in jeopardy. For the only reason that they refused to accept communism. That they refused to accept subjugation. You want me to continue? Come on. Tell me I'm wrong. I've been there when you probably start learning how to, to walk. I was there. I was when I saw the assassinations. The people who were killed for free free. And you're telling this to the people here and the government of this state come here and sit up say no. We need registration. No, my friend. No, my friend. You don't sell this to me. You sell this to the people who do not have self-respect, self-determination, and they are weak, and they love to be subjugated and be dependent on the government. You don't sell that to me, sir. You don't sell this bill to the pre men and women of this country. This is a treason. This is an assault to the dream of the founding fathers. They didn't die for this. I can be here for years talking about what happened, what you people think to this. You don't know anything. You don't know what freedom is. You don't know when there's a man is stuck in the, in the firing squad and take the blood out of their veins. Because they want to be free. Ask the, the Hungarians, the Czechoslovakians, the Polish people, the Chinese, the Russians, the Cubans. This is what you're selling. Subjugation. Let's conclude my, my, conclude my testimony and I don't take any questions. 
Well, I hope you've seen some passion. You've understood what this man, Manny, has said, talking to an audience, most of which are probably clueless, like our legislature, following the leaders in the media, in the politically correct chorus, and people like, um, is it A.D. Goldstein, the chief counsel for Governor uh, Rahimondo? All of those who know what they're doing, they're preparing a slave camp for us, friends. And that's what's going to come. Peace and safety. Looking back now in this next segment, we're going to take you through a uh, just a quick bird's eye view of history and how we have been deceived for over a hundred years alone, never mind the civil war in America, but over a hundred years of perpetual war and lies that have led to those evil worldwide wars in which people perished by the tens of millions in the name of freedom and liberation. Right now, this segment, pay attention, we'll be right back after that. How many times have people told you that the media being owned by a select few isn't a problem? That these corporations and the bankers that fund them would never propagandize the people for their own interests? And certainly wouldn't endanger lives? That false flags aren't real? And that they would involve way too many people? That a secret that big could never be kept quiet? Media manipulation by bankers with money interests and governments beholden to those bankers is not the exception. It's the rule. There are countless verified examples that government schools conveniently leave out of the history books, and banker-funded media conglomerates are the last people that are going to give you a peek behind the curtain they've woven to protect themselves from the retribution they would surely face if the public were to discover just how little their lives mattered. One of the most well-documented examples of how war profiteers operate that parallels exactly with how these war profiteers operate today is the sinking of the Lusitania, an event that would claim the lives of nearly 2,000 people, including 195 Americans, and would be the false flag to get the American public behind a war that would later claim the lives of over 100,000 Americans. A war that up until this false flag planned by the elites, including J.P. Morgan and his Rothschild backers, and the Wilson administration was only supported by one out of ten Americans. And the motivations are the same as they've always been. Money and power. In the early 1900s, J.P. Morgan, the American agent of the Rothschilds, sold war bonds in America to fund the English and the French in their war with Germany. Not only did they profit through handsome commissions from these bonds, the money raised was then spent at the companies owned by Morgan and the Rothschilds. War was big money. Total purchases would rise to an astronomical $3 billion, which in today's money would be roughly $74 billion. Morgan's firm became the largest purchaser on Earth. And when German U-boats appeared to be turning the tide against England, they faced a very real possibility that this ocean of money would dry up. This would mean substantial losses to their balance sheets. Additionally, this would also threaten England's ability to repay the billions of dollars it had borrowed with war bonds. In fact, Morgan was finding it difficult just to sell the bonds that funded his military-industrial complex, as it appeared the Germans might claim victory in a matter of months. To make matters worse, Morgan himself had loaned around $37 billion in today's money that he was now in danger of losing. Something had to be done. Morgan hired a committee that identified the 25 most influential newspapers. He then installed editors at each of the papers and paid them off to run stories that were pro-war. Eventually, he had over a thousand newspaper editors on his payroll and used his vast advertising purchasing power to strong-arm the smaller papers to trumpet the same pro-war sentiment. The Rockefellers of Standard Oil, who would also profit handsomely from the war, used its own publishing companies to influence the people against Germany, and funneled money to reluctant congressmen. Massive parades were held. But with all this campaigning and social engineering, the polling data still showed that 90% of Americans still favored staying out of the war. Enter the false flag that would plunge the world into war, killing over 100,000 Americans to protect the interests of the bankers and the ruling class. Winston Churchill, who knew all too well without American involvement in the war he would soon lose to Germany, began to work with President Wilson 
and the bankers on the false flag that would force the American people to support the war. The sinking of the Lusitania. The Lusitania, while built as a British passenger ocean liner, had been retrofitted with armor, revolving gun rings on its decks, and was classified by the British Navy as an armored auxiliary cruiser. Its lower passenger compartments had been removed to make room for the war munitions exported by America's industrial military complex. Churchill ordered the Lusitania and all ships to ignore orders from German U-boats to halt and be searched, and instead to engage the German U-boats or even ram them without warning. He also ordered crews not to treat captured U-boat crews as prisoners of war, but to execute them. This left the German Navy with only one option, to sink ships suspected of delivering war munitions on site. The Lusitania, whose previous captain resigned over Churchill's plan to use passengers as human shields, was loaded with weapons and ammunition sold by the J.P. Morgan Company in violation of every neutrality treaty. The German embassy in Washington filed a complaint to the Wilson administration and was ignored. The Germans went so far as to attempt to run ads in American newspapers warning Americans not to board the weapon-carrying ship traveling through a war zone, but the papers controlled by the bankers and by order of the State Department refused to run the ads. Using the media as a weapon against the people is not a new thing. The bankers and the politicians they owned were purposely sending unaware Americans right into a deadly trap. The so-called passenger liner carrying over 6 million rounds of ammunition was directed by the British Navy into an area where a German U-boat had recently fired upon two ships and was known to be active. To ensure the ship would be vulnerable, the destroyer that was supposed to escort the cargo to port was called back without notifying the Lusitania, leaving her a sitting duck in hostile waters. And on May 7th, 1915, close to 2,000 passengers, including 195 Americans, were sacrificed to the bankers as the German U-boat, U-20, fired at the hull, setting off a massive explosion when the munitions in the cargo ripped a hole so large in her starboard bow that one of the largest ships ever built sank in less than 18 minutes. The Lusitania was purposely loaded full of explosives and then led defenselessly into hostile waters in the hopes that it would be sunk by the Germans. This was the false flag that propelled America into what would become known as World War I. A war that easily could have ended before claiming the lives of over 100,000 Americans that died so that the military-industrial complex and the banking class could avoid losing money on a profitable war. A war that would later lead to another world war that would claim the lives of millions. All this so bankers could grow fat on the blood of the people that would line up for the slaughter war after war after war. The details of this false flag have been largely hidden from the public. In fact, as recently as 1993, the official story was that the Lusitania had exploded because of coal dust in the boiler rooms, and that it had not been carrying ammunition or explosives. The real story remained hidden from the public for nearly a hundred years, until in 2008 when divers found millions of rounds in the hull of the sunken wreckage. The media had successfully covered up a false flag for nearly a century, a fact that completely obliterates the notion that false flags involve too many people, and that surely someone would talk, and that the truth would get out. People who don't know their history are damned to repeat it. Do we have to wait another century before we get the truth of modern false flags perpetrated by the bankers and the deep state? When will the people stop confirming the ruling class's belief that we are all just cattle to be slaughtered for profit? Slaves that unknowingly prop them up and support their lifestyle of decadence and degeneracy, fighting for table scraps and vying for the coveted position as alpha slave, while the ruling class looks down at us not in pity, but with amusement and disgust. The technocrats are developing new ways to control us and eventually make us obsolete. We are rapidly approaching a future in which the ruling class will have successfully replaced us with lower IQ populations that are easier to control and easier to replace with automation. We must stop them now and expose them for who they are now because we don't have another century to wait for the truth to come out.
it's not just about the deaths on the Lusitania. It's not about the deaths in World War I, which led to all the deaths in World War II. World War II led to the deaths of nearly half a million American men. American men that might not have voted for the Immigration Act of 1965. And lest we forget, without World War II, there would have been no baby boom. That decision by those bankers, the Wilson administration and Churchill, to sacrifice the lives of unwitting pawns in their war profiteering game so they could increase their profits. The effects of that evil decision have irreversibly damaged this nation in every measurable way. And look at the British now, arresting people for thought crimes. The fairy tale that we were protecting freedom was always a lie. The truth is we live in a system that rewards sociopaths, and sociopaths do what's good for them. Nationalism is their enemy. Populism is their enemy because it gets in the way of their balance sheets. For Black Pilled, I'm Devin Stack. Well, friends, you've seen history now, real history, not fake history as shown and taught in our schools, in our colleges, in the media, but real history of lies, deception. You know, the Bible tells us in Hosea, it tells us my people are destroyed for lack of what? Knowledge, heart knowledge, obedience to God, knowing Him and obeying His commandments. And he says, but if my people who are called by my name, the true Israelite people of the Bible, which is the Anglo-American, uh, we talk about the, the races of, the, of Europe and the European settlers and so forth, each has their own identity. The tribe of Naphtali, the tribe of Dan, the tribe of Reuben and Asher, all of these today are the Portuguese, the Spaniard, the English, the German, of course, the Judahites, as well as the French and so forth. These are the original tribes of Israel. They departed from God. They couldn't keep the commandments. Jesus came as the sacrificial lamb to what? To do away with sin. And he will do away with a sinful body when he comes, the real Jesus. But my people are destroyed for lack of understanding of knowledge. And that's why it says in Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 4, that people like Gina Rahimondo and people who are running for her office are totally and completely unable to save our nation, to turn our course around and save us from the storm that will engulf us. He says in Isaiah that God will appoint children to rule over them. That is, people who are children in the mind they're not very wise, they're not very bright, they're certainly not very intellectually capable. But they are the ones that God has appointed to rule us. So why are we suffering? We're suffering because God says He's in control. And when we turned from Him a long time ago, and we miscegenated amongst the races, and we abandoned God's commandment. See, the word adultery, committing adultery means race mixing. It means to adulterate the race. Now, God doesn't hate other races but he created each of them separate, each of them as individual, if you will, entities in the flesh. Why? Because he created all the races. He created a special race, Jacob Israel, out of whom? Out of Abraham's seed. Yes, Abraham's seed and Isaac. Why do you think Anglo-Saxon means Isaac, Saxon sons? Today, the British, the Irish, the tribes of Dan, the Danube, that's the Danish and the Scandinavian, Teutonic people of the Bible. Friends, it's all too clear if you have eyes to see and ears to hear. Those are the Adamic races through Jacob. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. God calls these people who say they are Judah and are not, but do lie. He says in Isaiah 34, 5, he said, they are the people who are the, my cursed ones. He said, they have the curse of judgment upon them in the end. All right, you don't want to be there. You can convert no matter who you are to accept the blessings and salvation of Christ. Time's up. Goodbye. Thank you all for listening. Rick Adams. And remember that God will bless his elect in these times. Goodbye. <laughs>